All right, y'all. Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to say, call Halal Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai. It's all praise to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son of the world, ignorantly called Jesus Christ, man. And it's Officer Yadidai from his car, Dallas Camp. And wow, man. So, backstory to all this, backstory to me reacting to this video. I'm just scrolling YouTube. Right, I, and there's this one dude named Chris. I forgot, I forgot his last name, but Chris, he was the one on vocab channel. Like I guess I heard in Dallas, who ran up on uh, what was it, Battle Axe, and then ran to vocab channel talking about he confounded them and he confounded Sakara Dallas. Which, to my knowledge, Chris has been running from us. Chris has been putting our name, our name in his mouth every time he wants to talk on YouTube. To somebody who has any type of notoriety, right? But will never, but will never, ever, ever come see us in real life, right? He never does that. I've been on this comment board plenty of times, even inside of this video when it was going on, but I was working at the time. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to watch this. And I forgot about it. <laughs> I forgot about it, right? So I was on YouTube a few days ago, and I was like, oh, I forgot about this video. So I watched a little bit of it, and I was like, I was flabbergasted with what I seen. And I seen he got backup from from uh, from uh, Pastor Mike Holloway. I'm not about to call this man an elder, right? He's anybody in Christianity isn't an elder in, in any facet, right? I don't even care if you care if you're an old man. You're not an elder or anything. You're a child, as far as I'm concerned, right? But the stuff I heard this man talking about, the stuff the stuff I heard this man saying about Bishop Nathaniel of IUIC, man, big up to that man, doing mighty work, right? What the what I've heard, what I heard this man was saying about this man, I was like, wow, bro. Like you y'all want to say we're evil and we're wicked and stuff like that, but you double talk like in the short, I don't even watch all this. I watched maybe like 15-ish minutes. You double talk so much in this, I was like, nah, bro, this this will not stand, right? Elder Mike's been on my list for a minute, but this this video in particular, I'm like, nah, bro, this will not stand. So here we are today, right? We're gonna react to this. Let me see if I can pull it up. Okay, yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, we're going to watch here. I'm going to stop periodically and react on certain things. Let's go. No, basically internationally, no. Yes, sir. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, um, being that y'all, you know, you all are just y'all's inception or, you know, it's been established in 2003, um, you being the bishop and all that there, Many people that I know of, and to include myself early on, was a little bit confused about, you know, what is you all's angle? What's y'all's mission? What is your vision? So, brother, there's a guy on YouTube. I think it's like Black to Africa. I think he's like one of those like, uh, uplifting of, upliftments of Black people on YouTube type of channel. And he's having an interview with, with uh, Bishop Nathaniel from IUIC. So he asked him, what is his mission? This is where this all is, because this video, I think, is like three hours long. This is about like the 30, the 32nd or 33rd minute of this video. I just want to get it started so we could jump into it, because everything in the beginning of this is real long-winded. So this is where we're at right now. He's asking him, what is his, what is his mission statement? Can you share with the people uh, what's that all entail? Uh, yes, our purpose, our mission is to raise up the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, if I may, I'm going to just go to a scripture that's very popular in the uh, Christian world. When you go to uh, Matthew, the he started out wrong. And they tell him he's like that. And that's that's the audacity of Christianity. I mean, I'm not even really trying to stop right here, but I just want to say this for fast. That's the audacity of, of Christianity. They're so puffed up in their rhetoric and their pride. that They're going to tell him his mission statement is wrong. How are you gonna tell somebody? How, how are you gonna tell somebody their mission statement is wrong? That's their mission statement. They can have they, and all y'all. And it was crazy. All y'all probably go to a different church, right? Each church usually has like a a, a verse that signifies that church, and which is the mission statement of that church. And y'all probably all have something different. How are y'all gonna tell this man that he's wrong for doing what he for for establishing his church, right? Establishing his his organization or his camp or whatever whatever you want to call it, how are you going to tell him he's wrong for what he establishes it on? What verse in the Bible? Like, that? that's ridiculous. And it's crazy. It's off of Christ's words. They could have played the game, oh, see, you're trying to go after a man, but he's actually about to quote what Christ's words are. That's the pride of Christianity. Yeah. So, <laughs> right there, uh, Pastor, Pastor Mike. Yes, sir. Uh, 
um you want to you want to start with the with with what his mission is and what what is a christian's mission you want you want to uh, let him finish this you're, you're gonna hold him to the that's what I'm, now we're gonna hold somebody to the we're gonna hold somebody up against up against rhetoric right this is what we will how is he wrong according to the christian's mission statement he's not in christianity this is somebody who's left christianity for decades and taught against it christianity has done nothing but make our people soft and lie on the scriptures through the rhetoric that they're forced to believe in. Which is all you're going to hear in this? Scripture, you tap that scripture. Well, I'll tell you what, let him go ahead and let him finish that scripture, and then we'll we'll kind of double back and get and straighten him out, giving the Christian mission at the same time. Oh, That's right. 20th chapter, verse 19. Christ said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Now, upon reading that, many people go, oh, this is for all nations. That's just the opposite. When Christ said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, remember, when Christ walked the earth, there was no New Testament written. Every and, that, and that's that's a that's a, a tremendous point, right? We all, Christians would like to try to come up with a, against this. It's crazy. He's using a, a verse that they would use against us to to be a mission statement for what he believes in and the establishment of it, uh, the establishment of his camp or organization. It's crazy that he does that, but like he makes a, he makes two tremendous points right here. The New Testament wasn't even written yet. Like what you get with like the, like have the Gospels, Acts, Paul's epistles, the the general epistles, Revelation. I haven't even written or happened yet. So when, when Christians like to use this verse to say, "Oh, you mean teach everybody?" That can't be so, because it says it says teach them what I commanded you. Christ commanded people to keep the law. Christ commanded people to uh, to understand understand uh where he fits in prophecy right that, that's what christ taught now looking at those things that's always been focused towards israel it's never been focused towards everybody like that's that's never been the case and th that in itself is a tremendous point but on the on the face value of it where it says go teach all nations this man is literally fulfilling that he's literally fulfilling that like and and, and y'all sense and the actual sense of as far as like a Hebrew is like because he's going and teaching he he has a reach that's reaching uh that's reaching all of the world at this point. He has he has camps in various in various countries. He's reaching that, and on top of that, if you're gonna put it, if you're gonna do it in in, in y'all's point of view as far as I mean teach everybody, he's technically doing that by posting what he's doing on the internet. So you can't you can't even come up against this guy at all, as far as what y'all believe in, or just trying to just read the text. That doesn't make any sense. And then another point: what if, if this is talking about teaching? If, if this is talking about matter of fact, I'll let them say this. I'll, I'll let them say this, and then I'll make that. Everything point. he said was based on Old Testament prophecies. For example, let me show you what he meant. When you go to Deuteronomy chapter four, all right, and go, verse twenty-seven, uh, this is going to explain. Oh he my, just, he just oh butchered my. that. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, and, and how did he butcher it? That, that's a fact. He what Bishop Nathaniel said right there is a literal fact. That's a historical fact. The stuff that the stuff that, that, that happened. It, that's the the conclusion of the Gospels. Again, Ma uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all of them. This is the Great Commission that happens at the end of those. The stuff in Acts has not happened yet. Paul's epistles have not happened yet. Paul even being chosen to write his epistles to the various uh, churches that he was over, right, that was filled with Israelites. Even history will tell you that. You can Google it, but whatever, right? Those, if you want to say that's uh, natural Gentiles, like non-Israelites, fine. We haven't even got there yet. Let's just let's just say let's 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 let's, let's roll with that for a minute, right? That hasn't happened yet. How are you going to tell this man he's butchered that? But he literally said a fact about that scripture. That's hatred. And this is why this is why I believe these men are agents. This is this is everything you're seeing right here, what you're about to see, is showing you that these people are agents of white supremacy and that Christianity is white supremacy. When you when you sit back and listen to the way these people talk about this man and talk about Christianity at large, this is white supremacy. That's, that's <laughs> terrible. Oh my. 
That's an alley oop right there, the mic. So, <laughs> Missed the whole resurrection and everything. Pastor Mike. Oh, that, that, that's that's hilarious. Right now, I, I was gonna wait, but I, I need to get some scriptures now. He says they missed the re- he, he missed the resurrection. Now, a Christian will try to tell you that every time you want to make any type of point, you got to go to Christ first. That doesn't make any sense. What if I ask somebody about like s- something historical, historical, and like what kings or chronicles? Oh, we got to go look at the Christ. The- no, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna go to things that are applicable, right? And secondly. Right when 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 Christ said He's going to, and, and commanded the the uh, the disciples to go teach what He taught, that's talking about the prophecies. You know what? Christ is in the prophecies. Y'all know that, right? That's Isaiah. Let's let's go to it. That's Isaiah the fifty third chapter. Let's just prove some points real fast. Then when it talks about the resurrection, I go to this all the time. Talks about him, him and his death. He was taken. We just talked about the suffering servant. This is Isaiah 50, 53, verse 8. Right? It says, He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off. He was he died. This is a reference to his resurrection. He had to die and then be resurrected. He was cut out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. Was he stricken? This is talking about Christ. He was going to die for sinners. The sinners of Isaiah's people, the Israelites. This is an Old Testament prophecy. So no, Bishop Nathaniel was not wrong. He's not mistaking the the resurrection. The the resurrection is in the prophecies. But the only reason y'all would say things like that is because y'all shunned the whole first freaking, I I don't know, I don't know the specific number of the amount of Old Testament, Old Test, so-called Old Testament books, right? But that's the majority of the Bible. Y'all shun all that and then just jump to the New Testament. That's why y'all say things like that. That's why y'all say that. And what's crazy, if, if we were if you were actually pressed about it, you would admit he's right. Because you would we, we would ask you, is, is Christ in the Old Testament prophecies? They're gonna have to say yes. So what are you talking about right here then? That's hatred. That's hatred and that's lying. And matter of fact, <laughs> the scriptures talk about following a multitude to do evil. That's what this is. Y'all are coming together to raise up a false report on this man, which is a sin. Let me get another one. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Yeah, Exodus. Matter of fact, I wonder if this in the NLT is a little bit better. It might be. It might be. Yeah, this is Exodus. Was it 23 and 1 in the NLT? It says, you must not pass along false false rumors. You must not cooperate with evil people by lying on the witness stand. Look at this. Look at the KJV. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. And that's what all of y'all are doing. Everybody in this this video, right? I I don't want to click back on it because it's going to automatically play it again. But that's what they do. That's what this is. That's that's a sin. And you know why that's okay in Christianity? Because the law doesn't matter. So why not why not bear false witness on people? Is oh y'all teaching a works based salvation, right? So since it's not a works based salvation, it's okay to, to give false room false rumors on people and to lie on people and to be a false witness. That's what you're doing. This it's madness. Numbers. Numbers 24. Back to the point about the resur- the resurrection in Christ in the Old Testament. Right? Numbers 24 and, seven- and 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall, ar- shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. Basically, Come, like th- this is what you see in uh, uh, Revelations, the 19th chapter. Even Christian scholars will make Revelation 19 and Numbers 24, verse eight, uh, verse 17 and 18 is a Christological prophecy, talking about the same person, which is Christ, who is in the Old Testament. This is a prophecy. So when you say he's negating or not even talking about or dealing with the resurrection, which is crazy, y- y- y'all don't always talk about the resurrection when y'all talk about the Bible. Like that's that like that's just a false statement. 
just just to try to discredit somebody. All right. When, when you say he does that, when you say he didn't do that and he didn't go talk, talk about the resurrection, yes, he did when he said teach the prophecies. This is a prophecy. It's just like your your hatred. It's y'all want to Christians want to talk about love, 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 but all they display is hatred. Because to love somebody, to love somebody in John chapter uh, second John one to six, and this is love that we walk after his com uh, commandments. This this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. That's how you show love. Look at this. Let's look at this Greek word right there for right here for love. Oh, it's agape. The one thing Christians want to always talk about, oh, it's agape, agape, benevolence. Love is keeping the commandments. If you love this man, like you y'all want to talk about love, love, love. If y'all love people, y'all would keep the commandments. But since you don't love this man, since you're a murderer, right? And I, I want to talk about this. I'm gonna deviate real quick. Since y'all are murderers, y'all will choose hatred. Y'all will choose to support a religion that's based off of the based off of your oppressor being supreme over you and maintaining his supremacy over worshiping a false a false deity. Y'all can say, "Oh, Christ! Oh, Hebrews is right about Christ be, uh, having melanin," but y'all believe in this white Christ when y'all continue to push the, the agendas that y'all do and have uh, and be false witnesses like y'all do. But back to this point, y'all are murderers. Let me see. I think it's John 15. Yeah, 1 John 3, verse 15. Hit him with the New Testament. Whosoever hateth his brother, right, is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Y'all want to say, oh, I got eternal life abiding in me? But you're just going to spread false rumors on this man. Convenient. Convenient. Right, convenient. I think I want to let him finish. I want to make my point. Let's go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. um, mm -mm. <laughs> what, what, what do you say about the Great Commission? Since um, we we got it wrong, yeah, bring it break it out. Bring it out. Well, certainly. Let, 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 let's establish this right right off the rip. Bishop Nathaniel is a false teacher, period. Fact. And That's he's, it. he's prime evidence that weeds grow quick. Um, and, <laughs> and and that's and this is what this is going into. Why well, I say this, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I know I keep stopping, but this is real quick. This, this is prime evidence of how Christianity is white supremacy, right? Because this is the same thing, this is the same thing Edomites do. This is the same exact thing, the so called, uh, uh well, it's the same thing Edomites do. They immediately try to discredit you. So now, when you when you say somebody's a false teacher, oh wait a minute. Well, if he's if he's a false teacher, everything he's gonna say, I might as well not even listen to it. That's that's the type of emotional emotional roller coaster you're putting people on when you say things like this before you before you even go into the proof is, Oh, you just you're just a you're just an evil teacher. You're a Satan. So of course everybody's gonna now look at you like this because you're like, oh, this guy has some type of status. Right, this dude has some kind of notoriety on the internet. If he's calling somebody a false teacher, he's probably right. So damn what this guy is saying. I'm about to just listen to what what uh, Pastor Mike Holloway says. That's the same exact thing they did with the with the uh, that the, the Edomites did with the Black Panthers and any black movement that's ever existed here. That's the same exact tactics. You're doing the same thing. If he's a false teacher, prove him. To, go in the Bible. Go to his verse. And, uh, show scripturally that he's wrong. If you're so, if you're so, uh, if you're so puffed up and pride, you're so prideful and you're right and he's wrong, show us. Because, and I'm saying this because I've watched this a little bit farther. He doesn't do this. He just says he's wrong. Watch this. And that <laughs> a lie, a I lie like will that. spread faster than the truth. This hmm. man is a false teacher who has deceived thousands upon thousands of people. He he does not know, and, and we've already we've only a few minutes in, and we've already witnessed his his bad exegesis of scripture. He he doesn't know how to properly understand scripture. So when no. you talk, how because he didn't go off the rhetoric that you did. So since he well, oh, matter of fact, because he's not going off the rhetoric that's been passed down from the from the slave master to the slaves 
throughout the annals of time to your grandparents all the way to you? That is that why you actually did it wrong? Huh, okay. Talk about the Great Commission. Surely, uh, the Great Commission is a powerful passage given to the New Testament church or to the disciples specifically in Matthew chapter number 28. Mm -hmm. And that mission was and is to go out into all nations. Now, Bishop Nathaniel is going to conflate the passage and try to change the meaning of it by doing some bad uh, uh, understanding of the a bad exegesis of the text. He says that Israel has been scattered throughout all the nations. Now, is that a statement of truth? Well, yes, but as Christians, we shouldn't be uh, moved. My pastor often says it this way, rat mm -hmm. poison is often 90% good food, but it's that 10% strict man, that 10% poison that it kills. Ah, that's, mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, that, that's that's correct. It, it's funny, this dude, Austin Johnson, talking about some Hebrew two-step. He really just two-stepped it. Right, he, he, and double talk, because he said like, "Oh well," he, he's saying it's talking about Israel being all nations. Is Israel all nations? Yes, but, but wait a minute. If Israel is, if you admit, and history will attest to it, Israel being into all nations, why, why, why would he be wrong in saying he means go to these places where Israel is located? How would he be wrong with it by that? Because I want to, I want to make this point. I want to, I want to get this verse, and then make the point, my point that I've been holding on. Tobit thirteen and three. Look at this. Tobit thirteen and three. It says, "Confess him, confess him before the Gentiles, right? The nations. This will be ethnos. The, the, the ethnos that he's talking about. The people, which really just means people. Uh, people love to play the game about Gentiles. Oh, it means it, it, it means people." Is Israel the people? Yes. That's why when you see uh, Israel being talked about, we're talking about them being a holy nation. Quadash, holy, is always in front of what the word that you will see that's represented uh, 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 represented as uh, Gentile or people. It's holy people. So even in that context, when Christ's saying that, it's, it's it could be up for interpretation. So how can you, how can you emphatically say he's wrong? Oh wait, I know why. Because he's not parakeeting the the, the the he's not parakeeting the rhetoric that's been passed down to you from the slave master. That, that's why, right? So let me go back to this. Tobit thirteen and three. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. He scattered us among among uh, among the uh, the Gentiles, among the people. So that's why Christ is saying that. And the reason why the reason why we would lean. A little bit more to matter of fact, which one would lean all the way to with the way the way uh Bishop Nathaniel is breaking that verse down. The way, the reason why we leave lean uh lean ourselves all the way into that breakdown is because when you look at what's said in, in uh what is that? Let's go to the Great Commission where Christ is talking about where he's quoting. I'm just gonna go to 18, 2018. <sighs> Yeah, I'm going to start at 19 and read 20, right? It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. So here's, this This is where you'll, this, this is the thing that'll start Basically, this is the process of elimination right here, where it talks about teaching them to observe the things that I commanded you. What did Christ command them? Oh, so y'all can't even see this. What did Christ command them? What did Christ command the the uh, his disciples and the people who follow them? Let's go into some of those things. Let's go into some of those things. Uh, Matthew. I like this one, Matthew 7 and 21. I always go in here. I always go to Matthew 7, 21. It says, Matthew 7, verse 21. It says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will, the will of my Father, which is in heaven. 
So the only people who's going to enter into the kingdom of heaven is those who do the will of the Father, which just so happens to be keeping the commandments, like it says in Psalms. Matter of fact, let's prove it. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. This is uh, Psalms 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of God is us keeping the laws of God. So Christ is saying the only people who's going to enter into the kingdom is those who do the will of God. And a Christian will try to say, well, that's the Old Testament. That's before he died, right? So let's see if the will of God changed after he died. I've been meaning to pull this out on a Christian, but I haven't had the opportunity to. Let's see. Uh, this is Romans Romans 2, verse 27. This is Paul's writing. This is after Acts. This is after, well, tail in Acts. It, it's up for debate, right? It's after Christ died. It says, uh, this is Romans 2, verse 17. is behold, thou art called a Jew and arrestest in the law and makest thy boast of God. Watch this. And knoweth his will. We're talking about the will of God, right? Because the Christian will say it changed after Christ died. And knoweth his will and approveth the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. So in the Old Testament, Psalms chapter 40, verse 8, right? It says the will of God is keeping the commandments. New Testament, Paul's writings, the will of God is still keeping the commandments. So let's go to back to what Christ commanded. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So those are the people who keep the law. That's what he commanded. That's what Christ. That's one of Christ's commands. Let's go into another one. I'm going to get three. And not to say that's the only thing he commanded, but this is something he commanded. This is Matthew 19, verse 16. It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Christ commanded this man to keep the commandments. Right? Now, oh, that's talking about the commandments of Christ, the law of Christ. Let's see. And he saying unto him, which Yahweh said, or Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. He's naming things that, that are uh, in the in the Mosaic law, in the Ten Commandments. This is what Christ commanded. So we're supposed to forget about this. Let's get another one. Because that's clear as day. We don't even got to, that, that's clear as day. Matthew 5, 19. Verse, oh, it's 5, 19. It says, Whosoever shall shall uh, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So we see three instances of Christ telling us we have to keep the commandments of God, keep the the law of God, which is also synonymous with the law of Moses, the Mosaic law. Right now, you would ask, why is he bringing this up? When you look in the law, there is a lot of racist qualities in the law. A lot, just not not even. Oh, he's just saying that. No, there's specifically racism in the law. And as long as that exists, how is he going to be teaching people? How is Christ going to tell the the, the apostles to, to to teach these people, teach people the things I commanded them? One of those things being the law, right? And to teach them to keep the law, how are they going to keep the law? How are they how are they going to keep the law when there's racist aspects about it? How is what Christ said in the Great Commission going to be applicable to all people, right? If there's racist qualities in the law, what about an Egyptian? Because Christ said, let's do this. Exodus. 12. And, and don't get me started about the prophets. That's problematic in itself. 
Exodus 12, 40, ordinance of the Passover. Yeah, look at this. Hey, this Exodus 12, verse, can y'all see that? Exodus 12, 43. It says, and Yahweh said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. That Hebrew word right there for stranger is literally a non-Israelite. It's a non-Israelite. So, if we tell them to keep the law, the most important day in Leviticus, what, 23, where it talks about all of the high holy days is the Passover. How are they going to keep, how are you, how are you going to tell another nation to keep the Passover? Because Christ said, oh, I just thought of a cut. I just got to remember where it is. Uh, uh, freak, man. Uh, uh, where is it said? Hold up. I just got a great, I got a great point. So, let me see. So, Matthew 26 and 7. Or is it 17? This is do, 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 do. We we'll prepare you to the Passover. That's Passover. Passover with the twelve. Don't you betray me? Do this kind of the cup. She easy take the cup. This is the vine. Where is this at? I gotta find this. You bless this to take it. Under testing the hand right there. Oh, where is this at? I gotta find this slack. It might be a loop. That's over. Thanks. Through the wine. I drink it till the end. Say, this is my body. I can't remember. Say, this is not betraying me. Where is this? It's gotta be a mark. Watch it be a mark. Watch it be a mark. Is he yeah, giving him new covenant fruit? Say to him, get this one more again. Which one is this? Right? I forgot off the top of my head. I gotta look it up, but it's basically talking about when you do this from time, you're talking about. And uh, uh, when you when you uh, keep the Passover from year to year, right? Do this in remembrance of me, right? That's something Christ commanded. Like when you take the pass, you when you when you eat of the Passover, you do this in remembrance of Him. <laughs> so that, if that's something He commanded, how is another nation going to do that? How is another nation going to do that? And I think this is I think that might be a cut too, right here. That, oh, this might be it. Oh, this is it. This is it. I, I thought it was in the Gospels. It says 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, or the Lord Yahweh, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me, in remembrance of me, right? Verse 25, it says, after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he when he supped, saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood, this do ye oft, it was going often, just like as, as you do it often, because it's a yearly thing. Passover instituted yearly in Leviticus 23. This is, that's a commandment. That's a commandment of Christ that we keep, we eat the Passover. We eat the Passover in remembrance of His death. How is another nation going to do that according to Exodus? That doesn't work. So when you when you run into problem, you you're going to continually run into problems like that. When you want to say the uh, when you want to say the Great Commission is talking about Christ saying going literally literally to all people, because keeping the law is one of those things He commanded. How are they going to do that? How are they going to keep Passover? How are they, they going to do that? If a stranger is not allowed to eat Passover, 
That does not work, bro. We don't even have to get into the profits. Because it's going to get, and even they know, it's going to get real bad when you start getting into the profits about salvation not being for everybody. Especially Ezekiel 34, freaking uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 63. Things like that. It's going to get really bad. So, and so are we going to go with your breakdown, which is the rhetoric from the past down, or we're going to go with what, go with uh, uh, basically the flow of the Bible, the narrative of the Bible all the way up until the point of Christ's death? Because the narrative of the Bible goes with the Lord dealing with one chosen seed, right, all the way down to where he gets to Abraham, and then that gets spread off into his descendants, which Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then spread off into the patriarchs. And the Lord's dealing with the patriarchs, uh, allowing them to get put into captivity for breaking the laws of God, and saying, if you just listen to me, you can get out of this. You can get out of this. That's the narrative of the Bible. That's why he sent a savior for them, that ultimate savior being Christ. And as part of that, as part of those captivities you went, you went through, that's the curses of Deuteronomy the twentieth chapter, which should, should overtake thee. One of the curses is verse sixty four is about you being scattered into all nations. That's why that's why Mike Holloway has to admit Israel's been scattered into all nations because then you're going to be lying. And then as soon as you do that, that's problematic because when you deal with the narrative of the Bible. If you just read it from start all the way, it's all start all the way into you get to the Gospels and the and the uh, into the uh, what is it, the Great Commission. You'll understand. Okay, I know what this is talking about because even even Caiaphas. Let, let's go to that. John eleven. Even Caiaphas knew what was up. He knew what Christ's missions was. Uh, this is okay. John eleven. This is going on the screen. Yeah, John eleven verse forty nine. It says, and and one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest, that same year said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, right? The people, the people, right? You and F knows the people is that, and that the whole nation pairs not. That's talking about Christ dying for Israel, specifically. So the whole parents pair not, right? So they don't die. It says, uh, priest. okay, verse 51. It says, and this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Did that say everybody? That didn't say everybody. And it says that not for that nation only, not for these people who were still in just in Jerusalem, the three tribes, but the whole rest of the tribes. That's why it says, and that he should gather together in one. Because remember how they said, oh, they're wrong. He's wrong for saying he's going to. That's not the mission. The mission is to gather all the Israelites. False. That's false. But as you see right here in John chapter 11, this was Christ's mission. He, elder, and you know who's the elder? Bishop Nathaniel. Bishop Nathaniel is, is an elder. Elder Bishop Nathaniel, right? His mission is the same one as Christ. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God. The children of God are the Israelites that were scattered abroad. The children of God that were scattered abroad. That's talking about Israel in all nations. This is why the the this is. This is a precursor to the Great Commission. That's what this is going because because then right, and I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna leave some meat on the bone for Christians to even say anything. Well, I'm a children of God. I'm not in that land. Let's see who the children of God are. Let's go to Paul, their favorite their favorite uh, author in the Bible. Right, I'm gonna start at Romans nine and four. It says, "Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God?" And the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Right. It says, not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Why? Because and a lot of Hebrew, I got to stop right here. A lot of Hebrew words, let's get this verse wrong. Let's say they'll see somebody uh, raccooning out. Right. You should know what that means. Right, I say it like that for YouTube. They're 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 I see people raccooning out, 
And they said, oh, see, not all of Israel is of Israel. No, that's not what this is talking about. Because the context of Romans chapter 9 is talking about the seeds, the seed line, the bloodline descendancy. All the people in the land of Israel at that time were not bloodline Israelites. Perfect example, Herod, the same person who was trying to kill Christ. Perfect example, the Ishmaelites in that land trying to take part of the promise, which actually goes with this chapter. And the next verse, it says, not as though the word of God had taken an effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, right? Because Ishmael is also from the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That's the chosen seed line, Isaac's. Through Jacob, through, through uh, Jacob and Israel, the Israelites, right? It says that is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So anybody outside of the true people who's been chosen, which is Isaac, Jacob, and his descendants, everybody outside of that are not the children of God. So even Caiaphas, the same people, the same person who the Christians want to try to crucify in their movies, knew about Christ, knew about Christ's agenda, knew about the prophecies, right? And matter of fact, he knew that, matter of fact, let me go back. He knew that through reading the scriptures. That's why he said this in verse uh, 50, we're going to read 49. And said, and one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest, that same year said unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and the whole nation perish not. Where is he getting that from? The Old Testament prophecies. So when Elder Nathaniel said the New Testament wasn't written, was it, or, or all that stuff about the New Testament wasn't on the scene when Christ told the, the, uh, the apostles to go out and do what they had to do, this is why. This is why he's saying that, oh, they only had the Old Testament prophecies. This is what he's talking about. This is an example of that. And you get that by following the narrative of the Bible, the thing that y'all don't do. You want to parakeet rhetoric. You're lying. You've lied on this man. You lie on the Bible, and you lie on your own God that you say you believe in. That's what you do. I, I'm not a fan of, uh, I'm just going to say, like, I'm not a fan of Mike Holloway, right? He need, brother needs to repent, but I don't, I don't like how the dude moves, bro. Because it's straight, it's straight. Edomitish, Edomitical tactics that he uses. I don't, I don't like when our people do that. You, if you're going to be, if you're going to be uh, misinformed, just being misinformed. Don't, don't try to take it to a whole, a whole nother level and be the people in Maccabees where it talks about they hated their own people. I don't like that, and that's all you get in this, in this Christian panel. I am not a fan of that, bro. But that point is proven. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, a little so bit of lip. This is why it's it's vitally important to know the Bible because they'll say something that's true, right? But oftentimes that's the bait. But but what it's going to be is a bait and switch. So were the Israelites scattered throughout all the nations of the earth? Absolutely. Israel was scattered throughout all the nations of the earth. But that's not the context that Jesus is speaking in in Matthew chapter number 28. Jesus clearly. How, how, How can you say that? How can you say that? How can that not be the context? So, so somehow Caiaphas came to that conclusion, being the high priest. Caiaphas came to that conclusion, but you're now going to say Christ did. <laughs> you, you, you're now going to say, <laughs> "Oh, that changed when Christ started talking in Matthew chapter 28." That doesn't make any sense. Because imagine this: I proved this point, but I'm going to say it in layman's terms, and this, and this is. This I want y'all to follow this line of logic because this is gonna cut a lot of people before you like this is gonna cut a lot of people without even trying to go into the Bible to to uh, to prove your point. You're saying Christ told them to go to to all people. Okay, let's just imagine you're one of those people. You're you're one of those disciples who went specifically to the natural Gentiles, the non-Israelites. Let's say you're one of those people. You go up to a Moabite and say, "Hey, do you know Christ died for you?" I died for your sins. They're like, who is Christ? Oh, he's the Messiah of Israel. Okay. And you said he died for my sins, right? Yeah. What what are sins? 
transgressions of, of the covenant of Moses that, that, uh, that, that was only made with the Israelites? Wait, so, so what does this have to do with me? What, well, so if you believe in Christ, you can now be a part of this. But, but that doesn't make any sense. If he died for the transgressions that were under, the, under this law that these people made, how am I, how, how am I being, like, why do I need his death? That's what any logical person would say. That's what any logical, like, just imagine, that just don't work. That, just, <laughs> that don't work, bro. You got to really think about, that's what y'all Christians really believe. Y'all believe that, hey, this man, you're going up to a Moabite and saying that <laughs> Christ died for you, died for your sins. He's like, who is Christ? He's not going to know who Christ is. You're going to have to explain he's the Savior of Israel, like the Bible says. That's Luke chapter one. You can say what do you want. That's Luke chapter one. <laughs> and he said he died for the transgressions of the law of Moses. He's a sin sacrifice. Oh, yeah, he was his sacrifice for all the transgressions of the law of Moses. What's the law of Moses? The thing that was given to the Israelites. So why why, why would I need this? You know what I mean? Like that, that don't make no damn sense. So logically, the only logical conclusion you can come to is that Christ is talking about Israel has been scattered throughout all of these nations. And there's precedence for there's precedence for uh, 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 Israel being scattered and needing somebody to, to, uh, to be prophesied to. Just like when you get in Hosea. Hosea what is this? Is it eight and eight? Yeah, Hosea eight and eight is Israel swallowed up. Now, uh, now shall they become? Uh, now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no ple no pleasure? Why? Because they're going to be under the curses. <laughs> we see Tobit thirteen and three. Y'all can say, "Oh, that's that's not canon." Fine. What are you going to do about Hosea eight and eight? What are you going to do about Deut Deuteronomy 28, verse 64? So if that's that's what Christ is talking He's talking about these Israelites who has been among the Gentiles in all nations, like the Bible says, who has been viewed as a vessel of no pleasure. Because like a vessel is something to hold spirits, right? It's talking about a people. It's a similitude of people. A people who's among these other people who treat them like nothing, which is the curses. That's why that's why like apologies, apologies, the apostles had to go out and teach these people. Amazing, bro. It's it's like our chief said, incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible, bro. And then let's let's let's, let's push that let's put that analogy a little bit farther. They said, oh, he, uh, you, you're still talking to that Moabite. And yeah, he died so you could be a part of the new covenant. New? Is there an old? Oh, yeah, well, that's, that was for the Israelites, but the new one's for the new one <laughs> is for you. For what? Because when you see, let's go, let's look at this. Because you would have to explain, you would have to explain what is the new covenant. Imagine reading this to somebody who is not an Israelite, who knows they're not an Israelite. Watch, imagine, imagine reading this. This is uh, Jeremiah 31, 31. Because there's only two places in the Bible, which is, this is Jeremiah 31 and uh, the New Testament, Hebrews 8, where it elaborates on what is the new covenant. Watch this. This is Jeremiah 31, verse 31. It says, Behold, the day has come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So, if I'm a Moabite, I hear you read that. That's not me. <laughs> That's not me. It said, no, no, hold up. You can be, it, it's, it's talking about spiritual Israel. Oh, okay, just keep going then. Read the next verse. Not, verse 32, not according to the covenant that, that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them. Say if Yahweh. Okay, no, that definitely isn't talking about me. Because that's that's saying like the one that like just it's gonna be like it's it's gonna be a new one. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a new one, not like the one that they had previously, right? Which one they break. This is talking about a specific people. 
This isn't talking about anybody who said he can be a spiritual Israelite. That's negated with verse 32. So what are you talking about? You know what? You, you probably want a donation of some kind. Man. I'm out of here. That's, a, that's what all it's going to happen. If you're a logical human being, that's all. That's, that's the only conclusion you're going to come to. Like, that doesn't make any sense. It says, uh, but this shall be the covenant that I make I will make with the house of Israel after those days, save Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Still, watch this. Keep going. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep going. And then uh, a matter of fact, this is the last verse I'm going to go to and then I'm, then I'm going to uh, uh, deviate back to the point. Jeremiah 31 and 34, it says, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they all shall know me. So if I'm a Moabite, if I'm a Moabite, right, who's being taught this, I'm like, okay, if you're in a new covenant, you're in a new covenant, right? They're going to say yes. I'm like, why are you teaching me? If we're all supposed to know the Lord, if if I say I believe, it's, believe in this, I mean, that, that doesn't work, bro. Like, even to the standard that y'all hold yourselves to about being in the new covenant by saying you believe in Christ, Y'all are still teaching. If, if y'all weren't teaching people, why are y'all making a video about Nathan? You're teaching somebody. You're trying to attempt to teach somebody, teach somebody by spreading rumors about them. Or let's just take the rest to say y'all are telling the truth. Y'all are still teaching somebody. That doesn't work. That's highly problematic. It's for they all shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity. And I'll remember their sin no more. So that's that's in reference to Christ being that, that sin sacrifice. So if I'm a Moabite, how am I transgressing the law of Moses? Because tra transgressing means like an overstep, overstep a boundary. The boundaries were set in the law. The people who have the boundaries on them are the Israelites. So how is this applicable to anybody outside of them? I'm like, have a good day, sir. You're mad. <laughs> That's what somebody would do. If, if, if they're going to run off of Matt, if, if the apostles just took took what you said about Matthew chapter 28 and ran with it, that's what, that's, that's what ultimately what would happen. Like, that does not work. Says, go out into and teach all nations. Oh, Bishop man. Nathaniel, once yes. you play it some more, he's going to make it uh mean go out and gather the nations of israel that's mm -hmm. just simply not what he said he no. said teach all the ethnos the teach nations. all the nations right and and, and those nations they said it's, it's really to gather all nations like and this is what this is what i mean about y'all just say things you don't read the old testament the so-called old because I, I hate calling it that because it's really just the bible it's the bible that's, that's a made-up term old testament new testament that's a made up the division that is made up that that that's not a thing, but I'm gonna use their terminology for this. It's the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 49. If if you want them to go teach Christ, you know Christ is prophesied to be the gathering of the people. Let's see, Genesis 49. Wait, Genesis 49. Yeah, Genesis 49 and 10. Even Christian scholars will admit. That this is a Christ theological prophecy. So let's read this. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes at Shiloh, what Christ is called the Prince of Peace, right? This is Christ. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So what Bishop Nathan be that's not even really how he broke it down, but you you're saying he's breaking it down like that. But even if he did, would he be wrong? No, he wouldn't. Not according to the narrative narrative of the Bible, no, he wouldn't be. Like these are these are things that like it's 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 really ironic. All the things that he says about us, but well, they, they'll get you if you're not if you don't really understand the Bible and and uh uh you don't really understand the Bible and you don't really know how to exegete it, they'll get you. That's what y'all do. Everything I've heard Christians, everything I've heard Christians say about Hebrew Israelites, it just so happens to be a, tri a, a trait that they exude. Oh, they just cherry pick scripture. No, we don't. 
That's what you do. John three sixteen. You ask you. They'll they'll know how to break down John three sixteen, but can't tell you what John uh, three and fourteen says, or anything else in that chapter, or who Christ is talking to. They can't do that. They say we don't know how to exegete the Bible. We just we're just going off of our mind and just deceiving people. But like I like I say, they all, all my soldiers and the officers that are on me in Dallas. The Bible really is in our favor. Because we follow the narrative of it. Y'all don't follow the narrative of it. Y'all, y'all could go into these seminaries or learn under these uh these etymetical edom- doctrines is based off of rhetoric, right? And try to and try to push the rhetoric over the Bible and think the Bible is the rhetoric. You're you're di- you're dictating your your exegesis off of the rhetoric instead of what the text says. But since Hebrew Israelites de- dedicate uh dedicate our, our doctrines off of the Bible and follow the narrative of the Bible, our exegesis will always be correct because we follow the narrative. Y'all don't follow the narrative of the Bible. That's why we have problems like this. Christians are not necessarily speaking about Israel. It's speaking about all nations. And so there's a great conflation there. The mission of the church, number one, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You notice you cannot try to explain the mission of any Christ-centered. And and that will be, and like I said before, how do you do that then? If if, if the whole center of it is to believe on Christ, if the whole center is to believe on Christ, just like I I make the whole thing again about, about the Moabite. You tell them all about, hey, you need to believe in Christ. Why? Why do you need to believe in Christ? <laughs> because if you don't, if you don't, you, you're going to get judged for your sins. What are sins? Transgressions of the law of Moses. That's that's where the problem. That's that's where you run into the problems, man. It's crazy. That that's where you will run into problems. But we're wicked. Gotcha ministry without mentioning faith in Jesus Christ. But notice their focus isn't faith in Jesus Christ. But their focus... We, we do that. Not not just Bishop Nathaniel. And I've heard I've, I've seen plenty of Bishop Nathaniel's classes throughout me being in the truth seven years. I've seen some of his classes. They talk about faith. Oh, the matter of fact, let's do this. Watch this. This would be hilarious. This would be hilarious. Let's see. This would be hilarious. Let's just put, how you want to see faith in Jesus? See what we get. I don't know if you have, let's, let's zoom in. The very first video, what does that say? Putting our confidence in Christ. This is what I mean about you just lie. You just sit up here and lie. <laughs> Put the very first video they got two years ago right here. It says putting our confidence in Christ. This this man is a blatant liar and is an agent of white supremacy. That's what it boils down to. So on being Israel and and right. I've seen him plenty of times bring out this. Even though we teach to keep the commandments, we teach this too, which he teaches as well. Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You have to have both because even to know him is to keep the commandments. This is 1 John 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So we, we push both because there has to be both. Yes, you have to believe in Christ. Oh, and Nathaniel teaches that. But you also have to keep the law. Y'all like to negate works. Like when you have to think about negating works, it's got to be the like that that literally is Satan Satanism. Literally. Like these are New Testament scriptures that I'm pulling. This is what you're, this is the only thing y'all read. 
And you'll read something in the Old Testament if it's convenient for you. Well, if it's convenient, if it's something in Proverbs or Psalms where it tells you, oh, I'm going to be protected, that's, it's convenient for you, you'll read those. But this is what, you, this is what your, what your uh, focus is. The New Testament, the New Testament says that to know Christ, even he says you got to abide in him and he will abide with you. Everybody check out that class I did about once saved, always saved, showing how that's false, right? But I, I wanted to, like, if you abide in Christ, he will abide with you. Anybody, look at, look at verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him, and you say you got Christ in you, ought himself also uh, so to walk, even as he walked. So Christ kept the commandments. He had works. He had faith and works. So we should have what? Faith and works. And that's what Elder Nathaniel teaches. And that's what all the camps teach. Like, you are an agent. That's what, you're literally an agent. Because you can't possibly be this, uh, like, the, what he says, what he what he says later in this video shows that he watches videos. So it's like, you're purposefully lying for an agenda. That's what it boils down to. As a people, he went straight to gathering the 12 tribes of Israel. They, they have changed the gospel into a people or an ethnic-centered message instead of a Christ-centered message. And so he's already off track. So, so that... That's such a, like, that's such, <laughs> that's the truth. He told, he told the truth. I don't he, he told the truth. Because <laughs> you know what? You know what, Mr. You know what, Mr. Uh, Mike Holloway? The gospel is, eth is ethnocentric. When you look at it, it's, eth it's really eth uh, ethnocentric. Let's look into it. Let's see. We've changed the gospel. Because it's crazy. They think the gospel just starts when Christ died. Even Paul, even Paul dis will disagree with you. Romans 1 verse 1, Paul, a servant of Yahweh Mashiach, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So when you look, going back, going back into the Old Testament, right, the, the the, the gospel is in the Old Testament. It's promised before the, the so-called New Testament, before the gospels, like, like they say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, uh, Paul's epistles, Acts, the general epistles, uh, revelations. It was prophesied before that. So when you look at where it was prophesied, at, it's always been ethnocentric. Like based an ethnocentric, I mean based off an, 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 an ethnicity, and that ethnicity being Israel. This is Isaiah 61. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings. Good tidings is the gospel, tidings meaning news, good, uh, good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Zion has always been a, 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 a represent, uh, represented as Israel and vice versa. So it's the gospel is for Israel. It's censored around Israel. It's the good news to let Israel know that they will not be captives anymore. That's why you always see in the prophecies about Israel being saved from captivity and them ruling, which just so happens to be something you see in the end of Revelation, like in Revelation 20, 21 and 22. Just so happens to be that. But but we're crazy. It's This is verbatim. This is, oh, I'm not giving my break. Let's look at this. They'll say, oh, good tidings. That's not the gospel. Got you. Got you. Right? Got you. This is Christ reading the gospel. This is Luke chapter 4, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Or Isaiah. And, it says, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. So even Christ attributes Isaiah 61 as the gospel. That is the gospel. That Israel will be saved from the, from the people who have oppressed them throughout the annals of time. 
And part of that is Hamashiach Yahawashai, who you call Jesus Christ. Because he's the catalyst for them to receive the salvation. That's why you see Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. That's the gospel. Did that say, did that say uh, he was cut off out of the land of the living for all people? No, it said my people or his people, right? Isaiah's people. Who is that? The Israelites. So it is ethnocentric. Let's look at another one. Look, I'm gonna start at verse. I'm gonna start at forty and one and read two. It says, "Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people." Say, uh, say, if God. It says. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, our captivity is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, her sins are her sins are pardoned, that's forgiveness of sins. Oh, who's the catalyst to that? Christ. And it says, uh, for she hath rece received of the Lord's hand double for her sins. Now, a Christian to try to jump, try to wiggle their way out of this. Oh, that's old. That already happened already. This hasn't happened because they were in a Babylon captivity, Persian captivity, Greek captivity, Hellenistic period, where they were forced to become Greeks. That's why you see when Paul's saying there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek because they're the same people, all the way to the Roman captivity. They never left captivity. So this is in the future. So you don't even have a wood room in that. Watch this. I'm going to jump down to verse 9. It's O Zion, which is Israel, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, with strength, lift it up, be not afraid, say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. This is the, this is the, the <laughs> what y'all would say, which I would say the gospel being ethnocentric. And on top of that, not only did, he, did the Lord promise this to Israel and Israel alone, look at verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of the bucket. They are counted at, as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he have taken up the idols, idol, idols, right, as a very little thing. The nations mean nothing to the Lord. Which is a parallel to, to uh, Second Ezra chapter six, directly. Like you, you don't know how to exegete the text. Yet you will lie on this man who's done way more mighty works than you. Which kind of is starting to look like it's it's kind it's it's kind of leaning towards jealousy, man. It's, it's kind of leaning towards jealousy. In order to understand the mission, you have to understand that this was Christ post resurrection. Mm -hmm. So, number one, we must believe that Jesus Christ came, he lived, he died for our sins, and on the third day, he was resurrected. Amen. And that, Amen. And Amen. these 12, 12, 12 men who believed in the resurrection, who he witnessed him, himself before physically saying, handle me and see not that uh, a spirit doesn't have flesh and bone that you see that I have. This brings out another essential Christian doctrine. We believe not only that he got up from the grave, but he got up physically and bodily. That's important as well. So we don't want to be the Jehovah Witnesses that think that he just got up spiritually. So understanding the mission of the church, we understand that we believe in a physical, bodily resurrection. And so these disciples are looking at a resurrected Savior, and they are to carry that. That's what they are to go out and teach all nations. Number one, that Jesus came. He died. According to the scriptures, he died according to the scriptures. Amen. And on the third day, he rose according to the scriptures. And, and so that is the mission of the church. Preach the gospel to everyone. It is the power of salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first, no doubt. But also Amen. to That's the Jew. And, and did he not do that? Did Bishop Nathaniel not say that? Maybe let's say, let's say he didn't say it in the words you said. He really said that, though. <laughs> he really said exactly what you said. We may disagree about who it's specifically talking to, which I already proved throughout a lot of scriptures already, right? But he technically said that. So what is this? 
All to the Greek. Yep. Man. So uh, <coughs> Pastor uh Pastor Mike pointed out a, a excellent point. Um, one of the biggest well, the biggest point of contention with that caused me to leave, if I bring it to a point, was uh, I saw that the movement was ethnocentric instead of Christ centric. And if you if you listen to what Isaiah says, I believe is I no, no, you left it. You left it because you love you love your oppressor. That's why you left it. You, you you heard and found out that your friend Brody cannot be saved, and you had a problem with it. You went to Mark fours and then went back into the church. That's what that's what exactly happened. Stop it, bro. Stop stop, stop it. Talk about the ethno. The Bible is ethnocentric. At what point does it stop being? Revolving. When, at what point does the Bible stop being revolved around the children of Israel? At what point? At what point do we not like? You get Genesis, uh, the establishment of Israel, right? You get the history, the, the historical books. <laughs> well, let's let's do the law, like the law, right? The establishment of Israel, Israel getting the law and joining into the covenant. Historical books things still revolving around Israel. The prophecies still revolving around Israel. Post the New Testament. Then we get to the New Testament. Christ coming to his own. You don't see him going to the land. You would have a point if Christ went to the land of Moab and taught the Moabites, but he taught Jews. And then and told, his, he told his disciples to go out and teach the Israelites scattered, on the, scattered around the world. The children of God, they're scattered. At what point does it stop being revolving around the Israelites? Because even when you get to the, that's, you, want, you play a game with Paul. You could all, like, you really can't if we want to go through each and every book. You really can't, but let's just say you do. Even when we get to Revelation, the last book, it talk about the children of Israel being raised, risen up. The natural children of Israel. The actual descendants. At what point does it stop being about Israel? Hell, y'all can't even, y'all's y'all entire religion is based off becoming a spiritual Israel, off of a nationality. That's still ethnocentric. Like y'all abandoned logic. It's, 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 that's why that's why atheists laugh. Like, this is why I was an atheist for like a good couple weeks. Before I even before I even uh came into like it was a little bit before I came into the truth. Because y'all are embarrassing. Me reading the Bible myself, I was like, bro, this can't be it. This can't be it. The, the reading the Bible and looking down, like that, it can't be it. This y'all are embarrassing. Like that, that you will let your love for somebody who's been whipping you your entire life, whip your parents, whip your grandparents, force them into a religion that you somehow now believe that, that doesn't even deviate. We are we ever gonna talk about that the the, 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 the the breakdowns you believe in doesn't deviate from what the slave master said? At any point, and you're gonna let that you love your friend who 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 probably grew up in the same hood as you, right? Whose parents didn't cash into their their privilege that they had, right? And since since he was cool with you, now that the Bible, the, you have to now color what you believe. You have to color over the scriptures that, that don't that, that don't agree with your ideology. You have to now be uh, intentionally blinded because of that. That's mad. Like that's that's lacking biblical in, in, integrity to the highest level. And not only so, like my elder, uh, not not elder, not, <laughs> not elder Mike. you will not be called that on the show, right? Pa Pastor Mike, right? Pastor the, the scatterer, Pastor Mike, right? You will watch our videos and intent and intentionally, intentionally misrepresent us to lift up the the status quo of this world. That's this is why this is why Christianity is white supremacy, because it lifts it keeps you in the status quo. The status quo is these people have exhausted themselves in the world. These people have given you a religion in the world. This religion tells you never to revolt, never to never to think you're better than them. Always think you're less than them. Really, always think you're less. But somehow, but somehow go to the same place. Then when you when you die, if you be good, if you be a good uh, if you be a good uh, captive, right, you can go into the same place they're going to go, which is also the same place, same position they've been living in since they've been here. That's the status quo. Christianity keeps you in that status quo. 
Since you want to hype up the status quo and make us look bad through misrepresenting us on different videos and teaching people to do so, you're going to be the least in the kingdom of heaven, lest you repent. Christ talks about that in Matthew 5, verse 19. You break the least of the I can eventually see you breaking the least commandments and you teach men so. That, like, that's, that's where we're at. <laughs> that's where we're at, bro. That this is why this makes me mad because that like I, I I despise Christianity. I despise it, bro. I, just, I don't even really go on a tangent there, but it just Lord. <laughs> Isaiah uh, forty two and six, just to back up what he's saying with some Old Testament scripture. He says, "I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people." A light for the nations and so even though you know and in, in, in a lot of times israelites will use that passage in matthew um was it matthew uh was that 15 you know the one he just read 20 yeah the one with their 28 um 19 mm -hmm. to 20 they'll say um well he's just going to the lost tribes of israel but um or the lost sheep of israel uh but that's not exclusively to them because Yahweh, God had always had the nations in mind. If, if, he, if he, like, okay, all right. Now, about Israel being a light to the nations, how is Israel going to be the light to the nations in captivity? This was said in captivity. Because they, they break it down, oh, we've always been, been meant to be the light to the nations. Y'all don't even know what that means. You always think, oh, that means that means since they believe in Christ, so we can believe in Christ, we can be see saved. No, that's not what that even says. Us being a light to the Gentiles involves us ruling over them and teaching them our ways. That doesn't mean they're going to receive salvation. That person even say salvation. Like as far and the and the salvation regarding Christ doesn't even say that. That's not what that's not even what's being said right here. And 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 let's just say let's let's let's, let's, let's do this. Let's just say it did. Let's go into what being a light to the Gentiles mean. Let's go into let's let's see what happens when Israel is the light to the Gentiles and see if it means what you say. Right? This is Isaiah 61, 60 and 1. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the uh the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. That's when Israel is exalted above everywhere else. We have the light, and everybody don't. That's the darkness that they're in. Light and darkness has always been similar to, to uh, uh, glory, glory, and enlightenment. When the people don't have the glory and enlightenment, what they're abased. So contextually, this is talking about us being a light to the Gentiles, right? It's verse 3, and Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So let's see what, what entails that. Right. So part of that is the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls, and they, their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I have had mercy on thee. Therefore, therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. Uh, they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. So let's see what that is. About the, the, they're gonna, the Gentiles are going to bring their forces unto us. Let's see what the forces means in the Hebrew. Right? It says a strength, might, efficiency, wealth, army. Strength, ability, efi efficiency, wealth, force, army. That doesn't sound like salvation. That sounds like being a tributary to a people, being enslaved to a specific people. That sounds like what we do. That's all a black, Hispanic, and Native American man to. The oppressor. That's what that sounds like. Which is really ironic because when you see who is bearing the light right now, the light bearer in like Isaiah 14, Lucifer, the light bearer right now was the king of Babylon. There's a new Babylon you see in Revelations. That's America. 
Christians say it's America. Hebrew Israelites say it's America. Y'all can break it out however y'all want. Conveniently enough, y'all disagree with the people who uh, who say that. But I digress. Lucifer is a person ruling this Babylon. What nationality of people do that? Oh, same people who gave you your religion, right? So those same people, we, we, we are tributaries unto them. So when we get our light, they're going to be tributaries unto us, specifically, which will go straight with, we're coming right back to this, Revelation 13, verse 10. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. It's a total paradigm shift. To where y'all are the, the, the oppressors in rulership, but we, the oppressed, shall be the oppressor. That's what the Bible teaches. This isn't what Big Yai teaches. This is what the Bible teaches. That's us being a light to the Gentiles. Let's take them into captivity, which is ethnocentric because we will be doing that. That's for Zion. Zion will be doing that. Zion's an ethnicity. Zion is a representation of Israel. Hebrew scholars admit that. Christian scholars admit that. That's ethnocentric. And Christ is a catalyst to this. We're not negating Christ, but you, we can't just read two words and say Christ. That don't make no sense. You don't even interpret the Bible like that. So stop the madness. And second thought, right, because I know a lot of people, when you bring this out to Christians who read a little bit, they'll say that's talking about, that's talking about people in the end time. The people who's leading in the captivity right here, let's see, Revelation 13, verse 1, it says, I, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast arise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, right? This is, wait, hold on, and, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. This is talking about the revised Roman Empire, the fourth beast in Daniel chapter 7. Like, Y'all don't deal with prophecy, so who would you even disagree with me in the first place? But that's, that, that is what it is, man. You, the, only other, the only other beast you see having this is the same one in Revelation and the same one in Daniel chapter 7. So what's the only conclusion we come to? That's the revised Roman Empire. Which creates that 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 other beast, which is America. These are the people who led us into captivity or going into captivity. The Lucifer, which it just so happens, these are the same people who are Lucifer, who's who's the king of this new Neo Babylon or New Babylon, going into captivity. And all that has to happen, all that has to happen, so that we can be that we now can be the light to the Gentiles by having them go into captivity and converting all their forces onto us. Because not only with that, not only with that, this is the power we'll have. Uh, they, I'm going to read this again. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually, that they shall not they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. So you could have played a game all the way up to this point. That's not talking about serving. It says right here, the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly, utterly wasted. So us being a light to the Gentiles, half of that is talking about us being a rulership over them. And if, if they want to step out of line, they will be utterly wasted, thus saith the Bible. Right? So where does Christ take place in this? Christ gives us the power to do so. You see that in Revelation chapter 2. Bring this out all time. This is Christ's words. Is it? And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. The nation and kingdom that shall serve, the nation and kingdom that shall not serve thee shall be broken and utterly perished. Christ will give us this power. So we're not negating Christ in this. It all fits together like puzzle pieces. It says, and he shall rule over them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of, of a potter sh uh, shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received in my father. Right? Starting at verse 25, it says, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. That which we have already is the law and the prophets and what Christ said. That it just so happens to be the thing Christ told us 
commanded us to teach the people in the Great Commission. It all fits together like puzzle pieces when you follow the narrative of the Bible. But since you don't do that and make Paul your God, right? When you do that, this is this, this is where we at. <laughs> we get here, you made a three hour long video <laughs> and now you're getting confounded. Man, this, this is nuts, man. Nuts though. Where is we at? Oh, right. Because about us being a light to the nation by bringing everybody back to God. Because I, I, I elaborated on the point about us being in rulership over, over all these nations and them being tributaries unto us. So the other part of that is us teaching the other nations. Isaiah 2. Let's go to Michael 4. I always bring Isaiah 2. Let's go to Michael 4. Um, is this where I want? Mark enough has. No, nah, Isaiah 2 is better in this context. Okay, Isaiah 2, verse 2. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Same context as Isaiah 60 about us being glorified, being established, going up to the high mountain. Basically, us being above everybody, and all nations shall flow unto us. Verse 3, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we shall walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So they'll come and learn of our ways, us, us being a light to the Gentiles, because they sit in darkness and don't know this law. That's why y'all get confounded because the doctrine y'all teach comes from there. Let's see. Talks about walking in the light of the Lord. That's that's us being a light to the Gentiles. Right. Plain and simple. Just like Isaiah Absolutely. says here, and then as Isaiah um uh 49 and 6, and it says it is uh to light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up. Uh, the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserve of Israel, I will make you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. In the there earth. It is. There and it so is. if we see mm -hmm. that and, um, and, and what he's Jesus about the salvation in the earth, he's really reading off a list in Isaiah 49. But the thing is this, the thing specifically is this, that salvation he's talking about is specifically only for Israel and always been prophesied to Israel. And the, the, uh, Israel being a light to the Gentiles cannot even happen until Israel is being saved and being established above everybody. So how can you break that down and say, oh, the ends of the earth just means everybody? No. It doesn't mean that. Stop it. Like that, <laughs> like you don't, this is what I mean about they go to the Old Testament when it's convenient for them. You're not about to go into, you're not about to go break down Isaiah 34. You're not about to go break down Isaiah 63. You know about to go the break down Isaiah fifty four about us about us uh, taking the Gentiles into captivity. You're not you're not going to do that because and once you add all those into the narrative Isaiah sixty three Isaiah thirty four Isaiah uh, fifty four your breakdown cannot stand for Isaiah forty nine verse six. That doesn't work with the order of prophecy. Like you just go in there because it's convenient for you because you can try to. Do whatever you're gonna do on it. Like, come on, man. Said in this passage in Matthew did not negate the plan of him reaching the the nations through the apostles. Because remember when Jesus took him as far as Bethany in the book of Acts, yeah, yeah. Them, said, yeah. And that see that stop like stop trying to stop trying to make, make prophecy be fulfilled. Like that's what they try to do. They try to make everything be fulfilled through Paul's writings. That's not even the case here, bro. Like, even in the context of that is when we've already been saved. Our temple's here. The Lord is with us. The other nations are bringing, our, bringing their stuff unto us. Like, stop trying to, it's just, you, you don't understand Paul. That's why you don't understand this. Let's, let's do this. First, 
is 315. What's the initial NLT? I like, I like how the NLT renders this. <laughs> this is 2 Peter's. 2 Peter's 315. This is, and remember, our Lord's patience gives uh, gives people time to be saved. This is what this is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things and all of his letters, some of his, his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted, twisted his letters to mean something quite different. And that's what y'all do. Y'all twist his letters to mean something completely different than what than what's going on. Completely different. Like the way y'all hold, y'all hold Paul's writings as if they are law and then contort off of those. It, which is crazy. Like he he, he like the, that, that goes against what y'all call biblical authority. Like that going to that's a, a whole nother rabbit hole with it. It says twisting his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of scripture. And this will result in their destruction. And this will result in these men destruction unless they repent. Give you the Holy Spirit. Then he yeah. said that you're gonna preach this, you're gonna go take this message starting in Jerusalem, right? That's devout yeah. Jews and proselytes, right? Then to Judea, which would be more Hellenized uh, Jews and things of that nature. Samaria would be the 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 ten laws, the ten tribes that had assimilated into the Assyrian um, uh, captivity, right? Mm -hmm, but they right. still knew that they had a tradition that went back to Jacob. And we saw that when Jesus dealt with the woman at the well, right? Right, right. And then he said to the uttermost parts of the world. Which are the and Gentiles. Then, and to the Gentiles. So so then Paul picked that up. Prove that. Prove that's, prove that's other nations. Because you 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 really cut you really cut yourself on the ideology if you're going to admit the woman at the well was it was a, a Jacobite or Israelite. And maybe if, if that was another nation like that John four maybe if that was another nation you'd have a point but she wasn't. So prove that that's a non-Israelite. Prove when we went like the outermost parts of like Samaria or the outermost parts of the world, outermost parts of the Isles. Prove that he means go to not other nations. As far as natural Gentiles, prove prove that. You can say that. I can say whatever I want, but I got a scripture to back it up. Oh, and he said that this gospel is to the Jew first, but also to the Greek, to the and, and 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 why would that like it's crazy how Christians will take that breakdown to the Greek. That's specific. Y'all are like y'all say y'all are not Jews, which y'all probably are because of the way y'all break down y'all Jews. And Greeks, y'all are not Greeks. When did Greek, the word Greek just mean everybody? When is when did, when did we ever when like what like <laughs> y'all? Why do y'all remix nationalities? It could just mean everybody. It doesn't mean that. If he's saying something specific, it might just be specific. <laughs> and you, you would have to think. You would have to think about this. He said that I think that's in Romans where it says. The Jew first and then the Greek. I think that's in uh it's either Romans or Corinthians. Greece wasn't around at that time. That that was Rome. So why is he saying the Greek? You know why he's saying the Greek? Because Israelites went through the Hellenistic time period. Hellenist uh, Hebrew Israelites was Hellenized, which is aka means being turned into a Greek. History will tell you that. Those small hats over there tell you that. The Bible will tell you that. And when I mean the Bible, I mean first, second Maccabees. You can say whatever you want about, oh, it's non-canon. You can't really prove that because Christ quotes from it. Christ, Christ actually celebrated a holiday in Maccabees, which is Hanukkah. So Maccabees is on the table. And Maccabees, it's let's do this. Let's do this. Uh One, I think I'm gonna just. Is it six? I think it's second back. Actually. 
Professor Reeves. Yeah, I'm just reading. Let's read in context. <laughs> it says, as Second Maccabees six verse six, neither was it lawful for this during the Hellenistic Hellenistic time period. Neither was it lawful for a man for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Right? It says, and in, and in the day of the king's birth every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the fast of back or fast really feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to, uh, to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree, a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the, by the suggestion of Ptolemy, one of the king of Greece, right? It says against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifice. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles, these are the Gentiles or people that Paul went to. Oh, y'all can't even see this. I'm just in the reading this. Y'all can't even see this. The manners of the Gentiles, right, should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. So this is how we became Grecians. If you're not calling your, it even says it, I think that in First Maccabees, when we're not calling ourselves Jews or practicing any, any of the practices of Jews, or keeping the laws, keeping the feast days, keeping all that, eating swine, all that stuff. We make ourselves into Gentiles. And it just so happens that this happened during the time where Greece was in power over us. That's why he's saying that the, uh, to the Jew first and then the Greek. As a reference to the gospel, because the gospel is a reference in which is ethnocentric, what I proved earlier, right, is a reference to Israel. It's for the Jew and the Greek right here. The, 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 the Jew being somebody who, who were born in Judea practicing Jewry, and the Greek meaning the actual Israelite who went through the Hellenistic time period who conformed himself to the manners of the Greeks. And that's the only breakdown you can have because if you if you have anything outside of that, the Bible is now in, uh, not cohesive. The narrative doesn't go together. Because you would have to say, you, you see where the gospel is ethnocentric, Isaiah 60, Isaiah 61, uh, Isaiah 40, I think Isaiah 42 as well. Even in Romans 1, 1 verse 2, it talks about the gospel being the things that are prophesied in the Old Testament. Right? All that stuff is ethnocentric towards Israel. So if we get to what Paul's writing and saying that Greek means everybody or even just the, the, the Greek people, which wouldn't make no sense for the time period that it's written in, but I digress, right? If we get to that point where we're saying that's everybody or people outside of Israel, the Bible is now incohesive. It does not harmonize. It's a clashing chord that does not work. So that's what he's talking about right there. Scythian to the barbarian. You right. know what I mean? Right. And so, okay. yeah, they, they separate they, 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 it's almost like they're pitting Jesus. First, they're pitting Moses against Jesus, and then pitting Jesus against the apostles. It's Stop. So we're pitting, we're pitting Moses against Jesus, man. Hold up. I got something for that. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's just it's like the, the lies. The lies never stop with Christianity. Lies never stop with Christianity. This is what Christ said. This is John 5, verse 46. For had you believed Moses, you will you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, like the Christians say, how should you believe my words? So how why, how are we pitting Moses against Christ? That's that's just shenanigans, bro. Stop it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's like it's like we if if we come from a standpoint uh, to where we're um, uh, dividing and conquering the scriptures and then isolating the scripture, isolating the scripture, taking it out of context. Um, then we want, we're going to go down a rabbit trail that we have to continue to do that in order to make the scripture fit our worldview instead of allowing the scripture to read to us 
what is already saying it. Right. Right. Quick thing, right? I don't, I'm trying to get through this, but here's the thing, right? If that's the case, how come y'all never confounded us? How come since the the the, the decades of the Hebrew Israelite movement being established, right, to, to the point where we got notoriety? How come y'all have never confounded us? Whether it be IUIC, Sakara, GMS, freaking UPK, how come y'all have never confounded? How come y'all do, how come y'all do this? Y'all y'all get on on the internet and try to and try to twist people's words, accuse people of things that y'all really do. How come y'all have never confounded us in in an informal or formal debate? If y'all if y'all have the breakdown, if if the breakdown that the slave master gave y'all right has been the right breakdown this whole time, why have y'all never confounded us in a formal or informal debate? How come and the time when y'all come, y'all just get like speakers and try to yell over us? Like this seems like a desperate attempt to, to cling on to what little power y'all have left. Like people are leaving the Christian church at record rates. And the Hebrew the Hebrew Israelite movement is growing at record rate. Like it's 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 crazy. That's how you know Christ is with us. Because if Christ if Christ where Christ is will be the gathering of the people. Y'all have been losing people since even before the Hebrew Israelite movement even started. Y'all can't even keep Edomites in y'all's church. Y'all don't appeal to nobody except somebody's grandma or a woman. Uh uh what is what did it say in Paul's writings like uh late uh silly women y'all that that's the people who y'all appeal to no no woman no strong woman wants a man like y'all <laughs> well you got Christian and, I, and I'm not even about to go <laughs> I'm not even about to go <laughs> you know what I'm talking about I'm gonna keep going pulling yeah. out of the scripture was yeah. already there you know, um, one of the most interesting things that I found out that I find with Bishop Nathaniel when I was looking at the video is that when he tries to compare and contrast scripture, um, he word fishes. So what I notice with the Israelites and what they do is they will take a word from the scripture and they will then take that word and, and, and contrast it with another word. So like um, like. Like, for an example, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? Yeah. So they'll go to Isaiah with the last part of Isaiah. I forgot the chapter where it says world without end. So they are word fish on the word world. Mm -hmm. um, I'm creating this narrative that the world that they're talking about is the world of Israel. But that's a complete fallacy because in the book of Romans, Paul talks about world without end as well, but he talks about including all nations. Where is that? Where is that and where is that breakdown? Well, let me find it. <laughs> and the thing is, we don't need, we don't need Isaiah, was Isaiah 45? We don't need that. Or oh, 45 and 17. We really don't. Like that, <laughs> we a lot of a lot of Hebrews like Hebrews like we'll use that because we don't feel like dealing with John 3.16 because it's really kind of a it's so foolish to think that that one verse just now negates all of prophecy, the law what Christ said, like it's just foolish so to just suffer y'all a little bit, we give y'all Isaiah 45.17 and y'all say this and y'all don't know how to deal with it like, this, that's, that's the thing that's crazy right? let's, let's say it means a world without end means something completely different than what we, what we say, fine I mean, I, that, that's, that's irrelevant Verse 14 in John, the third chapter, negates what you're talking about. Matthew 15, 24 negates what you're talking about. Matthew 1, 21 negates what you're talking about. Luke 1, the whole chapter negates what you're talking about. The law, the prophecies negate what you're talking about. Peter negates what you're talking about through both of his epistles. Revelations negate what you're talking about. So, I mean, cool, bro. Like, that, like it's crazy, y'all, like, They'll, they'll, they'll make just the craziest points. I'm not even trying to hear this dude talk, bro, to be honest. It, it, that, that's one of those ones. I want to see what, what, what Maury says about Nathaniel. These guys are slow. Or was supposed to be a nation practicing God's staff. Let me see. Well, 
share mine if you don't mind just go ahead and sh if you want to because mine's i've already got it um planet he was telling us to gather the lost sheep of the house of that. israel that had been scattered from the assyrian captivity babylonian captivity persian mead captivity and greek captivity when christ walked the earth that was under Roman occupation. And that's what many Christians don't understand. For ex another example. Woo! <laughs> like he, he, said, he, just, he just proved that he doesn't understand the scriptures. Was he not? Was Israel not under? <laughs> was, Christ, was, was Christ and Israel not under Roman persecution? Even in John chapter 11, they said, uh, we keep letting this guy, uh, let me see, is, is it Roman? Wow, that's madness. Go back to 50, let me see. Yeah, John 11 verse 48, it says, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So how so how does Rome have the ability to do that? If, but they went under under Roman uh, captivity. That's stupid. You're stupid. Everybody in there is stupid. They just waited for Elder Mike to say something. Why are you the pastor, the scatterer, Mike? Right? They waited for him to say something, and just and just started just cheering like cheerleaders. Because like, this, 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 this is the only reason I'm even, I'm even doing this video, really. Because Chris, Chris is so unlearned. This dude just runs up the IUIC, puts our name in his, in his mouth, runs up the IUIC, and just really gets cut every time he goes there. Right after battle us, got cut when he went there. So we had to go enlist the help of Elder. Let's see, I'm doing it again, man. Scatter her mic, right? <laughs> that's what that's what he had to go get help from him to even make this video get any type of views whatsoever. And since he's unlearned, he's just trying to sit back and then wait for Mike to say something and just be a big old cheerleader with his pom poms on. And we'll abandon logic. Didn't Christ tell? I, I forgot if it was Peter. I think it was Peter. He told Peter to, to render unto Caesar what Caesar's. Who's Caesar? That's Cap. <laughs> they asked him, should we pay? I think should we pay taxes to Rome? And Christ in a roundabout answer said, yes. If you're paying taxes, you're a tributary. That's what being a tributary means. That means you're in captivity. What are we doing? What are we doing, man? I just, what are we doing? That the text in Matthew 28 does not There's say, nothing. go gather the Israelites from the nations. It, it says, go out, didn't it? Come on now. Go on. out and teach all nations. So he that little word, you know how Satan in the in the book of Genesis slide a slide a word in, change the whole context. That's mm -hmm. just what this false teacher just did. The perception of the mission of Jesus. So Christ told them uh, real quick, real quick. So Christ told them to teach what he commanded them. He commanded them things regarding the law and the prophets. Let's read the prophet. Let's read the prophets. It says, gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation I desire. I'm just going to leave that there. I'm not even going to give a breakdown. I'm not going to allude to anything. I'm just going to just put that right there. It's been poison because mm. he's adding something to the scripture that it never says. And you can see that clearly in the book right. of Acts mm -hmm. when, they had dis when they had disbanded from Jerusalem to different nations to spread the gospel. Mm. Absolutely. Matthew 28, 19, go therefore and make disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 28, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Oh, come on exactly mm, mm. so again conflation adding to the adding to the text changing the context to fit his own uh pretext and and that's just a problem and, and that's what you have to watch out for these cult teachers mm. and the, 
And if I want to add something, you know, we're in Deuteronomy already. Deuteronomy verse four, I mean, Deuteronomy chapter four, verse two, it says, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Say that again. <laughs> he is adding <laughs> as he please. Now, this is where, let me do this. When a major tenet of Christianity is free grace, free grace theology, your theology, your the theology that you believe in, you're sealed. You're sealed when you believe in Christ. Works don't matter. The works being the law. You're now going to hold them accountable to Deuteronomy four verse two. When you believe, you don't have to keep Deuteronomy at all. This is what I mean by y'all go to, y'all go to the Old Testament when it's convenient for you. But when it's time for you to be held accountable to it, you don't do it and teach against it. Like, I feel sorry for any woman who decides to deal with these men because... <laughs> They lack leadership of their own selves. <laughs> they lack leadership of their own selves. They lack mental fortitude. They abandon logic. And they're terrible exegetors of the scripture. Their judgment is awful. And these people are going to be the same people trying to ride on you in the end times. For just believing what the scriptures say verbatim. Incredible. Incredible. And on top of that, he didn't even add to it. This, 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 this end of the day, he didn't even add to it. That's, I mean, dude, he's teaching what he's teaching. He's telling, uh, he's going to host like it. He's given the breakdown about gathering the children of Israel as part as, as part of what Christ taught. What Christ taught is that we need to keep the law and the prophets. You need to teach people to do that. We already went into a prophecy in Zephaniah chapter two about Israel gathering together. That's part of that. And just the ideology, bro, you see so like, the ideology of the law and the prophets require Israel to be gathered. So you were just telling them this is going to happen, like, they're going to want to congregate with you. You see that in Acts. Those are Jews. You see that in Acts. Like, are we, are we just, are we just going to just strain it in Acts? Really? He's adding Israelite every time he needs to to try to put try to preach that. So it's it's, it's so ridiculous. Says that one. All right, we had another brother join. Uh, young brother uh, Isaac. Isaac, introduce yourself real quick and where are you from? What's going on? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. What's up, y'all? Hey, everybody that's joining in on the live stream. Hey, I'm hey. Isaac Shepherd. Um, Leader at OCBF Church. Oh, man. Currently, currently a seminary student here at DTS, uh, working on my master's degree um, from Arlington, Texas. And that's me. Already, already. Good stuff. Matthew 15, 24. Christ said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What makes us lost? We lost our heritage, culture, country now, <laughs> language, identity. We've lost it all. Now we don't know who we are or where we come from. So our goal, our mission is to raise up those 12 tribes that have been destroyed and scattered in captivity. So wait a minute. <laughs> I ain't heard Christ. I ain't heard Christ in, since the beginning of the video. I ain't heard nothing about mm. the Holy Spirit. I ain't heard, matter of <laughs> fact, I ain't heard nothing. About How do you hear nothing about Christ? But the very first, very first verse he pulls out is Christ's word. About nothing. No. Uh, right. of, of no God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You see how he conflated and he didn't jack the whole another scripture up. So he says, We are not sent but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then he he took that verse and said, We've lost our identity, our culture. Well, well that's just not the context. The, yeah. the Israelites, Jesus were talking that was talking to, they knew exactly who they were. Exactly. Yeah. And they, they not knew exactly that. who. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But no, no, no. I was going to say I was going to concur. Like not only that, but even when you was talking about the Hellenized Jews, 
Yes. Though they though they may have blended in with other nations, and they knew who they were as Jews. Amen. You could not take that from them. Their mm -hmm. identity was intact, though they may have adopted other cultural traditions. Mm -hmm. They knew deep down inside who they were. Yeah. You see that in Acts. What a straining at the what a straining in that point that is. Right, because so he's saying, oh, so they're using it out of context because these people knew who they were. Being lost biblically, biblically doesn't just mean you not know your nationality. Look at this. This is Isaiah 50, verse 6. It says, my people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go to stray. They have turned them away on the mountains, and they have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Our shepherds are, are people who are in a pastoral position, a, a ecclesiastical leadership position. They've caused us to worship other gods. That's the same thing y'all do. That's the same thing y'all do, literally. <laughs> like on this live, could you want us to serve a, another God and another gospel? The, the Christianity that y'all teach is another gospel outside of the one Paul and Christ taught, literally. Being lost isn't just you losing nationality. This is one example of that. Christ came to save that which was lost. That's Matthew 18, 11. So he's coming to save these people who've been lost worshiping other gods. Are people lost forgetting who their resting place is and where it is, which is Yahweh? Because what's brought down to Hosea 13 and 9, we've destroyed ourselves. But in your how is our help? Madness. It's, it's, it's mad. It's maddening, bro. <laughs> it's maddening. You're just straining it. That's, man. You, you just, you're just saying things to try to discredit a man for no apparent reason. Thank you. It's like an uh, Americanized Nigerian, but still <laughs> connected to his family. He might be second generation, you know, or first generation American, but don't speak his language no more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, or it, but but he can understand it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's took on American culture and stuff like that. So that's that's I, that was a good point. That's it. That's the, all. The, that's why the 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 Septuagint was was written in Greek because there were the Hellenized Jews, as my dear brother was just talking about. Wow, bro. And, and th this is what I mean. This I didn't, I didn't even hear this part before. This is what I mean about how you know what the Greek, like when it says the, the gods of the Jew first and the Greek, you know who the Greek is that's it's talking about. You know this. And you know about the Hellenistic, Hellenistic time period, but you'll still say, they're talking about everybody. Agent. Is an agent. Yes. Which for these Israelites that were intermingled throughout the nation. So they still understood who they were. Many of them right. had had uh, gotten away from their original Hebrew language, which was the need for the Septuagint Greek version of the Old Testament scriptures. But so he conflated again and misrepresented the scripture. But when, when people don't know the Bible and they're gullible and they haven't been to a sound church to gain good understanding, they fall for this rhetoric and they go out yeah. into this false camp. Yeah, right. and, 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 and and what what you just said, if I could chime in real quick, and I I, I don't want to beat up the church, but but we do have to do better. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in our training, in our, our taking the the um, scriptures more seriously. Absolutely. Um, and, and yes, that too. The church didn't want to try to do better. The church didn't want to try reading the Bible until the Hebrew Israelites picked it up and started reading it. But they have the breakdown. They have they didn't they didn't want to start reading the Bible and, and making it applicable. They want to keep singing and dancing and lying to people and giving people rhetoric, all the way until they realize, oh, these people are reading the Bible. They start trying to read it too. Well, this this is why we leave. This is why we leave. Having a better <laughs> uh, respect for the gospel and the doctrines of Christ, the core essentials of the faith. I know, you know, and I'm I'm still a, I'm a charismatic. I'm a continuous, you know, but I'm more reformed. You know, I don't I don't embrace hyper charismaticism and yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, left that and just <laughs> an over 
emphasis on the supernatural and all that that stuff can become idolatrous you know what i'm saying most most excellent theophilus said well why would i need christ when i when i can just trust in my ethnicity and me being from the 12 Mm. tribe so come on yeah that's that's really what they're promoting these people are finding their comfort in being israel notice Mm. they don't call the awakening coming to christ Mm -mm. no the awakening is finding out who you are that's wow. that in and of itself is close to blasphemous. Wow. <laughs> you see, they're looking, they're, they're, they're looking in their, <laughs> they're looking towards their uh, ethnicity and have a comfort in their ethnicity. And yes, we do. We do have comfort in our ethnicity. Watch this, right? Watch this. Romans 15, verse 4. This is Romans 15, verse 4. It says, for, matter of fact, can y'all see this? Yeah, you can. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We find out that we're Israelites through the scriptures. We find out that we are Israelites through the curses. This The, the scriptures give us a reason to realize all the stuff that our people is going through and still going through now is for a reason. It's not just random. It doesn't just, these people don't just get to just rule over us forever. These, there's a reason for what you're going through, the method to the madness and a way to get out. And you want to take this away from people. You, you would rather us be black, uh, uh, Afro-American, all that, just say we believe in Christ. That's what you, you that's, that's why I say Christianity is white supremacy. Because all we want to do is be like Christ. We want to realize that, oh, I'm a descendant of the, of the same people who Christ descends from? you telling me knowing that? Because Christ, Christ is, only, is, is only coming to die for his people. Matthew 1, verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and he shall, and, uh, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You see scriptures like this? Like I said, okay, he's gonna he's gonna save Israelites from their sins. They're, they're his people. Who am I? Wait a minute, I look in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. I, my people fit all these curses that that uh, uh that the law says. We fit all those. And I'm like, you know what? There's a reason why we go through this. This ain't just random, because the only conclusion you can come to is that if, if, if we're not the Israelites, or this doesn't matter, God just hates Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's what you believe in, and you want us to stay in that. That's why I say you are an agent of white supremacy, because white supremacy is the status quo is that you are nothing. Just believe in this Messiah. You can say Christ is a Black man if you want, but you still believe, believe in that white Christ. That's what you believe in. Let's be honest. That's what you want to take that. You want to take the hope away from us. Us, us being proud that we're Israelites does not take away from us believing in Christ. I've learned that there's some, there's a phrase that I've been hearing a lot. Both can be true. Two things can also be true. That that there's never like we live in the history. There, there, like there isn't. <laughs> You've never been in a society where, where like, where two things can't be true. That 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 we that we've never been in that type of society. Yes, do we do we have comfort knowing that we're chosen people? Yes, by God, yes. The same thing, the same thing Paul said. You think Paul like Paul? Paul made an emphasis on he's an Israelite throughout the scriptures, his epistles, rather. Yes, we are. We have confidence that the Lord set us above all people, like the scriptures have said. So I'm just supposed to just disregard. I'm, I'm supposed to disregard. Deuter- so now Christ died. So Deuteronomy seven verse six isn't. Is seven verse six isn't even applicable no more. But thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord have chosen thee to be a special people unto Himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You wake up every day and you're treated like you're nothing. Wake up every day. Your grandparents were treated like they were nothing. They were getting beat. Your parents may have been beat, uh, uh, discriminated against, segregated, segregated against, 
told that they were nothing, treated like nothing, forced to be in school systems that are intentionally bad based off of where you live in, and when you try to put your kid in a, in a, in a, a, a so-called Edomite neighborhood, you got to go to jail. That happened in Oklahoma. That's one state up from us. You would rather stay in that and, and just say we believe in Christ and give y'all money. Y'all hate black people. You hate Hispanic people, and you hate Native American people. But when we're wrong for just having having just the tiniest bit of just thinking we're something better than nothing, bro. That is I, I, that's something that's crazy. That's something that's absolutely nuts. Why would God want you to believe just oh don't believe you you're nothing just believe in this guy just let these people just continue to oppress you for no reason? Are you sick, bro? That's absolutely nuts. Both can be true. Because, matter of fact, First Peter 2 or not. This is after Christ died. Read this in the, I think it's the either the NID, NIV, NLT. Look at this. The ESV, this is one of a lot of these Christian apologists like to read anyway. This is uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. Are you about to rebuke Peter? Because it says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's not talking about Christians. This is talking about actual Israelites. Peter is talking to, to actual Israelites. This is though always talking about the human race. No. Beginning of Peter. Chapter 1. 1 verse 1. Let me see. Wait, not that. No, that's not what I want. I want Galatians. Because who is Paul? Who is Peter committed to? Where is this at? Yeah, Galatians 2, verse 7. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision, these are Israelites practicing Jewry, that the, as the gospel of circumcision was committed unto Peter. Peter was over the over Jerusalem. The Jews over there. That's who his letters was written to. That's why I said elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Elect means chosen. Are you about to now rebuke Peter when he said you are a holy race? Y'all don't believe in God. Y'all think you are nothing and you want to be you want to be subjected to your oppressor. That's all this boils down to, bro. That's why I tell you 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 were literally an agent. You're an agent of white supremacy. When you uphold this, the status quo through your your false religion called Christianity, which is really Satanism, antinomianism, free grace theology, that's wicked as hell, you are an agent of white supremacy. That's all it boils down to. You would rather us be nothing, bro. That's absolutely maddening. I'm let's go a little bit farther. All right? Yeah. 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 And it's, and it's interesting because if you read Philippians, Paul laid out his pedigree, an Israelite, a Pharisee from the tribe of Benjamin. But why is it that he can say that when it comes to Christ, he count all of it nothing? Yes, sir. It bro. means absolutely. He counted, he counted him keeping the law. That's what he said at the, at the end of that. When he said he counted all these things done, he, 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 he was talking about keeping the law. And that doesn't take away from anything. Because you see, let's say you're right about that breakdown. You see Romans 9, verse 4, literally say, who are Israelites who pertain to the adoption, Christ's death, to be adopted back to the Father, Christ's death, the glory, the covenants are old and new, which you already proved, the giving of the law, the service of God. Whose are the fathers as concerning the flesh Christ came? That's all talking about Israelites, and for, by Israelites, for Israelites, only Israelites. But y'all won't go into that. You're, you're divisively not going into that. Because you love being a boot-licking raccoon Christian. 
absolutely nothing to him when it comes to beholding Christ. He was willing to forfeit all of his ethnicity, his pedigree, his 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 statue as a mm -hmm. Pharisee for the mm -hmm. sake of Christ. But yes. not once have I heard Bishop Nathaniel talk about Christ, but rather the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> you got him, Doc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got to so, sit like, hold on. You got that, well, Huh? It's a it's a it's a flesh doctrine because it's it's focusing on skin. Right. Chris is the most. This man, God, bro. This man up top. That's Chris. That's the dude who's been talking mess about us running around town talking about he could found us, but never will come to our camp and talk to us ever. Ever. Chris, you about the you you about the dumbest. You you like it's. Like who's who else on here? That that dude at the bottom, he's dumber than you. But you were just the second dumbest person on here. It's a flesh doctrine. Stop, bro. You see all throughout, like you see all through. Let's say Paul's writings when you start talking about the spirit versus the flesh. Christ talks about it too, right? The flesh is your is you being wicked. That's what the flesh is talking about. That has nothing to like. That has nothing to do with a race or ethnicity, and you know that. You see that with Galatians. You see that with the fees. You see it all throughout Paul's le Paul's letters and his epistles. The things that you stand on, that you look at as law. Like stop the like stop the shenanigans. Like you you keep talking about us remixing scriptures, but here you go. You we talk about us word searching and remixing re remixing doctor uh, 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 definitions of words, but here you go. Didn't Christ say in John six verse uh, sixty three? Uh, the word that I speak unto you, their spirit, the flesh profit of nothing. The flesh is contrary to the spirit, according to Paul in Galatians. So that the flesh is contrary to Christ's words. Christ's words is the word made flesh the Bible. What they call the Old Testament. The law and the prophets. Anything contrary to that is sin. You know this already, but you want to be intentionally divisive. Everyone, everyone on your, on here is is white supremacist. Let me say like You focus right. in on skin, that's of the flesh, so it taps mm -hmm. into the, the the. You focusing on thinking you're anything other than a black. That's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't even need to, stop, to keep stop, but you, you focus on anything outside of you being nothing. That you you're not a Christ. That's wow. The 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 vices of the flesh, you right. know. Uh, so you made the eye, the lust to the flesh, and the pride so, of life. So you saying there is not one scripture in here. That say that my skin, my ethnicity is a prerequisite to uh please the most high or go to heaven. Well, Absolutely no. not. Hey, hey, Chris, do we teach that? Chris, do we teach that? The same person who watches our videos, the same person who came up to uh uh one body, not one body, uh battle axes of Israel. Shout out to salute to them brothers, man. <laughs> and uh IUIC, did they teach that? You know we don't teach that. You know we teach who you descend from is either a qualifier or disqualifier of you having salvation or having anything to do with Christ or the word. You know that. It just so happens to be the people that you love, right, were marked with that token just like Cain is. The, 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 the Edomites, right? It just so happens that they are marked like, uh, marked like Cain and lack melanin. They still all descend from the same progenitor, which is Esau. What about what about the people who are dark skinned who are Edomites? That could be a thing. You see that with the wheat and the tares, the children of the kingdom, the people, the, the children of the wicked one. You see in Daniel chapter two, verse forty-four, the kingdom isn't be given to other people. So that that the children of the kingdom are Israelites. So the, the wheat are Israelites and the tares are people who, who the tares look just like the wheat. So what does that mean? That's the people, that's the chocolate covered Edomites. What about the Hamites? What about the land of Ham? What about those people? Those are dark. Are they Israelites? No. So how could this be about color? We're talking about seed lines. That's why Matthew, not Matthew, uh, slack here. Isaiah 45, 
25, it says, And the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory the seed of Israel. The seed of Israel. What is a seed? Let's look at the seed right here. Seed sowing offspring, offspring, descendants, posterity, children. The people who literally descend from Israel are the people who are going to be justified. This is what we teach. And you know that because you I've seen the videos of you coming up to these, coming up to, to various camps and talking about the Israelites. You know what we teach, but you're going to intentionally lie to be an agent. Stop it, bro. Like this, I mean, like this off integrity, off integrity wise, at least at least represent our points correctly. Y'all just love captivity so much, bro. It's it's absolutely maddening. But back to Isaiah 45, it says, it's Isaiah 45, 25. It says, and, and the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Just the, who's the justifier? Christ. Does this say all people? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Christ is this justifier. What is that? Five, three, eight, eight chapters later, it tells you about the Messiah who's going to be the justifier and who he's going to come for. Oh, it just so happens to be a nation of people, which makes it makes us the justification and the salvation and the gospel wrapped around an ethnicity, which makes it ethnocentric. Like, stop the madness, bro. No, no, but they will argue and say that if you go um, think to Leviticus or I think Deuteronomy, he said, my people are precious to me. So they will kind of like wiggle that somewhere in there to show you that God cares only for Israel. because right. Israel So so we're going to diminish that. We're going to diminish Leviticus 20 and 26. We're, we're going to diminish that. We're, we're going to hold... Hold, hold us to uh, hold Bishop Nathaniel to Deuteronomy 4 and verse 2, which he didn't break. You're going to hold him to that. But now when it talks about Israel being special unto the Lord and separated unto the Lord, we diminish it. Wow. Because I think it's, 20, it's 26 and 20. It's the 26 and 20. 20. Nah, it was, it was, I knew what it was. It was 20 and 26. Where is, is that? Uh, oh, shoot. This is Leviticus 20, verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye shall be mine. He didn't do that to everybody. He separated us. Are we diminishing this now? We're diminishing this. Well, you're going to have to rebuke. You're going to have to rebuke Peter and Paul, because when you see in, in, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So I can use Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26, Deuteronomy 7, and I think Exodus 15 or Deuteronomy 15, I forgot which one, right? We can use that for doctrine. We can use that to establish a point. But you're not going to allow that because it, it, it would show that there, there's a, uh, <laughs> what's, what's that word Deacon always say? Uh, uh, stratification. It, it shows Israel being stratified above everybody or separated from everybody. You're going to diminish that so you can diminish yourselves to be underneath the, the foot of these people. Precious wow. to the most high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what they don't understand is that Israel was never uh, uh, ethnic focused because no. any Why? how 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 was Israel never like that's a, like sh... how Moabites ethnic centric Ammonites ethnic people Hamites Cushites Canaanites, Jebusites, Hivites, ethnicity, but some reason when it comes around to people who have the covenant of God, 
the people who have the covenant of God now that's never been an ethnicity. What are we doing? Mike, you're a moron. My, like, I, I want that to be on the record. Mike, you're a moron. Just, just, just off top. If we can, just, if you can just say stuff, I'm saying that you're a moron and you're not qualified to teach the Bible. Body who would embrace Yahweh could become Israel. Pro, it was promise Ooh. focused. Where does it say that? Where does it say that? You say it's that's that's problematic. If it's pro, I'm, this is the last thing I'm doing in this video. Stupid. You're stupid. You're stupid as hell. It's it's, it's promise focused. Got you. Back to Romans Romans nine. Got you. Right. It says Romans nine verse four. It says, "Who are the Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption and the glory and the, and the covenants, and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises?" Right. And the promises. I'm gonna jump down to verse eight. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, they are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Who does it? Who did Paul say the children of the promise was? It's Israelites. It's not. It's, it's not about Israel. Anybody could be Israel, but it's promise. But you're a double talker, bro. You don't know the Bible. You don't. You don't. I'm, 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 please, please. Please show up to my camp. Please show up to my camp, bro. Find like put some in the comments. Contact us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, I, I, I freaking TikTok. Please contact us and let's have a conversation so you can be embarrassed. It would be very, it would be very respectable, bro. I I, I had I I have plenty of respectable debates on my channel and on the streets. Even vocab even said on my own video. He said, this is the, the most respectable Sakari member or Hebrew is like I've ever seen. Vocab said that about me. Please, co please come to my camp. Please. Try to, 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 to try to, if you love me, try to come save my soul. Come try to bring me out of this cult. Bring Chris with you. Because Chris, Chris doesn't have the testicular fortitude, right, to come up to people who will debate them. Because he knows, he knows IUIC is not about the shenanigans that y'all do. But you know, you know who not to come up to. Bring Chris with you because he he don't have the testicular testicular fortitude to do it himself. Bring him. We'll have a real respectable debate. Real respectable debate. With Dallas, Texas, Deep Ella. The chief place of concourse. We will be there. I promise you that we will be there. Contact us, bring Chris. Do what do what you gotta do, bro. Please do that. Please do that. But what but what I will not allow you to do unchecked is to try is to talk about Bishop Nathaniel or any any Hebrews like, like this and lie a lot like this. What about a man doing that much work? That's something you will never accomplish. Hold up. Let's do this. Full screen. That's something you will never accomplish. Your reach will be the, the maybe 100 to 200 views you get on YouTube. And most of those will be human Israelites using your content, your content to rebuke it and make rebuke videos. You're mad that your church is now, is now hemorrhaging money because people are coming into the truth and realizing what you say is high upper level BS shenanigans. That's the only reason why y'all want to say anything against us. That's it. That's the only reason why y'all would ever do that. Y'all, the, the Bible didn't matter until matter to y'all until Hebrew Israelites started reading it. Until the black and Hispanic man started reading it. That's that's when it starts to try to matter to y'all. But the, guess what? The jig is up. Because the Bible has always been in our favor and will always continue to be that way. Because we follow the narrative of it. But you don't, you parakeet rhetoric from your from, from the slave master. And it will not stand. That's why when you come up to, to Hebrews like camps, right? Or any of y'all so-called apologists, right? Come to any Hebrews like camps, the only thing y'all can do is come up with these with blow horns and just yell over them because you're not qualified to deal. You know what, you know what you can do? To try to, to, to try to make the, the to try to uh catapult the church into re relevancy again 
have a formal debate, or at least be respectable on the streets of Hebrew Israelites. You know where we at. We in the gaps like how Christ was. You know where we at. We're not hard to find. Have a respectable debate and win that. And that's how you get relevancy again. Then maybe people will start to be like, oh, well, the Hebrew lives are probably wrong and stuff like that. Instead of just running to your computer to have the Twitter figures and stuff like that and then lying on the prophets of God like there's going to be no recompense from it. That's how, that's how you catapult the church back into relevancy. Probably come up and conf come confound us. We would love for you to do so. Because, you know, the thing about Hebrew Israelites is we would, like, we would like to know when we're wrong. That's how you show love to somebody. Y'all talk about y'all teach love. Y'all are not trying to show love. Trying to condemn a man on the internet that you haven't talked to? That's not it. That's against Matthew chapter. That's, that's against Christ's ways, bro. Calling this man a false prophet. Calling this man a false teacher. When you haven't read the script, bro. Saturday, 4 p.m., Deep Ellen. Please. We have a very respectable, a very respectable debate. Or if you don't want to talk to, if you don't want to talk to the sister, the sister camps like Sakari DTX, Atlanta. Peach, like last last time I checked, Peace Tree Center, Peace Tree Center, Peace Tree Station, downtown, around the same time. Have a conversation. Have a conversation with the people you want to demonize instead of just trying to accept the bag for the people who's been oppressing you. How about we do that? How about we do that? How about we be real, bro? That's real. That's real talk. <laughs> man, I'm the time. I'm about to go to the grocery store, man. But then I'm gonna say, call all your Howard Bosch.